Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm Catherine, co-host Bestie. Welcome back to the Pod Lab, Catherine. Thank you. And how how are you today? Great. You look fresh. Yeah, I got my hair cut. Looks just nice. Came from there, yeah. Isn't from that new great place. when you get a, a fresh new haircut? Yeah, she said to me, "You're going to feel like a new woman when you walk out of here." <laughs> I and love that. I know. I love new. I do too. And I was like, yes. You know what I love about a haircut? Mm. I love having my head massaged. Oh. Like getting my hair shampooed and oh head gosh. massaged. I know. I, I love it. It's amazing. Uh-huh. It's very relaxing. Mm-hmm. I just had my hair cut a couple weeks ago by my niece, mm-hmm. Abigail. Yeah. She did a fantastic job. Yeah. Your hair looks really good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And the head massage was amazing. Oh, <laughs> no. Who knew when I was changing her diapers that one day she would give me a head massage? Yeah, right. <laughs> right? You just don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into our topic today because it's not haircuts, but it is what are women attracted to? Mm-hmm. Okay. In, in a, a man. man. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> what women are attracted to in a man? And we have some takeaways and we're going to go over. Catherine found an article as well as I found an article on a bunch of stuff that women are attracted to okay so that's going to be fun then we're going to do our perspective what what what, our opinions because they matter and then of course we're going to do our inspirational boost of let's look and see what the lord has to say about it yeah so those are our takeaways from today's podcast and then we have a call to action too so stay tuned all the way to the end Mm -hmm. you don't want to miss that all right let's in there let's go over your article first what what is the name of the article and where'd you find it it is what are women attracted to? It's simply that, mm-hmm. and it's by BetterHelp.com. Oh, I've heard, I've heard them advertised on various. I don't know if it's podcasts or what, but they pr- provide like mental health oh, care. Okay, via the computer. Okay, yeah. Well, I don't know if this is in particular order of importance or not, but uh, the first one is physical appearance. So let's face that's, it. That's sort of in the biology. You know, I mean, it is a biological thing. Yes. It's the way God it created us to mm-hmm. want to procreate, <laughs> fill the earth and multiply. I'm going to put it in biblical terms. Yeah. And, and there's a type for every person. Yes, Catherine. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Every pot has whereas a lid. Some people might go, buzz your girlfriend. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> right. Uh, others would be like, oh, yeah, I got to have it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> And the next one on is emotional attraction. Now, how do you gauge that? Well, I I guess like how the other person makes you feel inside. That's the bottom line. Okay. They're in you know, they're concerned with their internal qualities that the man makes them feel. I'm picturing for some reason, like a poet or a painter, you know, expressing their inner thoughts with their Mm, art. Yeah. You know, and, and women in the room going... Like the, you know, like the, what do they call those, beatniks or something? Yeah. Mm. My sister went to one of those. Really? A long time ago. Yeah. It was a poetry party or something. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, everybody went, I okay. don't know if you can hear my clap, but yeah. you know, like that whole thing. And huh, neat. Yeah. Very okay. So boho like. Right. So we've got physical attraction, which that's no surprise to anybody. No. And then you've got the emotional attraction. Mm-hmm. All right. Compassion. So a woman is attracted to a man who has compassion. This all makes sense, Catherine. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be just compassion for for her, you know, herself. But if he shows compassion toward other people. Right. It translates. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want a man who doesn't care about anybody else. Who's self-absorbed. Yes. Yeah. No, no. No can do. No. Cat can't do. (laughs) No cat do. not do that. No cat do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would say that empathy and compassion compassion go a long, long way. Okay, women are attracted to self confidence. A man with just self confidence and but not overly confident. Mm -hmm. That could Mm -hmm. be a turn off, Mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, just someone who can believe in himself. Right. You don't want somebody that needs you to hold their their hand to stand up and do life. Yeah. Uh, also, it says here that women are appreciate men who have hobbies and that, that men who have other interests in besides just perhaps their job, I guess. But oh yeah, especially if they're a workaholic. 
and that only have one track financial mindset type thing. Yeah. Um, having a hobby shows that they have invested in other things and it's interesting. The term that comes into my mind is well balanced. Mm, yeah. You're not overboard yeah. on work or overboard on the relationship where you're clingy or, you know, Ugh. right. Yeah. Or like a stalker. <laughs> like every time you turn around. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there he is There's again. There's shadow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it lists quite a few of the possible hobbies that could be included. And oh, what are they're they? They're very manly, yeah. I would say. Let's hear them. Well, there's cooking and grilling. Yeah. Make your own beer. Oh, yeah. Craft home brewing. Beer. Mm-hmm. Chess and other games. Leatherworking, which that surprises me. Who does that? Oh, well, actually, I did see that recently. at did a you? Yeah, up at St. Joseph in Michigan. Yeah. There was a crafter that made some really cool fly swatters and things with, oh, yeah, with cool. leather and um, lots of really cool things. Neat. Sports. And then, of course, that could be soccer, skiing, snowboarding, basketball, football, etc. Et Motorcycling, golfing, carpentry, computer programming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a job. It's for them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ham radio, reading and writing, gardening, classic car restoration. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Playing an instrument like the guitar, playing pool, swimming, sailing, and other water activities. I can see why those would be healthy. I can't believe fishing is not on here. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a healthy offshoot, too. Yeah. Hobby. It's a water activity, I would say, but I can't believe it's not actually listed. That all makes sense to me. Or hunting. That's not on here. Anyway, yeah. A man who has other interests. Yeah. Okay. Intelligence. Women enjoy being around men who can have have good conversations. Yes. I can get into that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if it said women like dumb men, I don't think think you'd buy it. You'd you'd be like, no, they don't. dumber than a box of rocks <laughs> like wow here come over here and mate with me <laughs> you big dummy <laughs> attracted to you because you're <laughs> so dumb i snorted <laughs> i'm sorry whoops i didn't mean uh, to do that <laughs> why can't you get that joke <laughs> it's so simple <laughs> oh then he got me going oh boy what's next all right kindness yes it's, that's huge too okay the world would be a much nicer place mm-hmm. if all of us yeah. would seek to be more kind mm-hmm. to everyone and again this is one of those things not just kind to his woman but to others others right that would help with yes the world would be a much better place even just think of the roadways Catherine. the road the if road. people yes road rage Oh, if people yeah. would just be more kind to one another on the road and <laughs> like when to you. OK, I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. I got to say this mm-hmm. when you're in a car with somebody mm-hmm. and they're road raging against somebody else and they're all upset because so and so is following too closely or they did this wrong or did that wrong. Who, OK. And then the person that you're with, they're going off on it. Yeah. The other person doesn't hear it. It doesn't affect them. Uh, true. Unless you give them a little one fingered wave that's right <laughs> but along with the look and i'm not saying that this happens to me because my husband doesn't do that that much you know he's not really a road rager mm-hmm. he gets frustrated but i have been in the car with people sometimes where they're really really like a rage yeah mm-hmm. and it makes it makes me tense mm-hmm. you know my my shoulders start to go forward and my, yeah. my shoulders come up to my head and i'm mm-hmm. like oh when Kenny and I were dating, I can remember this one time in particular where he was driving and this guy, I don't remember the details, but he gave Kenny the finger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kenny just looked at him and smiled. But, <laughs> and then he says to me, see, that's what you do. And I was attracted to that. Like, I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah. Now, I do have to say, now it's how many years later, like 34 or something like that years later and Kenny's a little bit more not as pleasant as that you mm. know he he may still give a, a smile but there may be other times where he might be like what an idiot you know <laughs> kindness goes a long way on the road friends yeah. so let's let's try to be more kind yeah and understanding 
And genuine, though. You gotta make sure that kindness is genuine, not fake. We, well, we can pick that out in a nanosecond. <laughs> we meaning me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Attentiveness. This is a huge one. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand that. Do, you know, we don't want to be smothered, but just... It, but you don't a want to be ignored. Balance. I won't be ignored, Dan. Yeah, somewhere between smothering and ignored. Find a nice medium. Oh wow, we are very, very precise. Right. Yeah. Women are complex. We human are, beings are though. Yes, I don't know what it's like to be a man, obviously, but I've I've raised five of them, so I've lived with men. And you have a husband right. of 30-something years. 33 years. So and you know a I, little I, bit. I know what it's like to live with men. Mm-hmm. And I also know what it's like to be a woman. Mm. And women are way more complex than what men appear to be. Yeah. They're, they're pretty simple. Yeah, they basically have, I would say, maids. three things on their minds yeah. most of the time. <laughs> so we all know what they are. All right. Food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. The bears. <laughs> no. yeah. All right. Another one is patience. Disagreements happen in relationships and d- disappointments occur in life. But women want to know that the partner they choose will be able to handle them appropriately rather than with anger or impatience. A man who is patient sends off an attractive vibe. A woman can tell that he's not easily riled up. Just like the example that you gave of when Kenny just smiled at the other driver. Mm-hmm. You liked that. You you liked it because he didn't... Um, Get riled up. Well, and it could have escalated the situation. He didn't do that. Mm-hmm. The situation was what it was, and yeah, it, was, it didn't become anything more than that. Right. His nature was endearing and becoming. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> the next thing that they want <laughs> is commitment. All women want commitment. Yeah. It says here. I I guess I can't say all. I can't speak for all women. Yeah. Guess not. I want commitment. I can speak for myself. I don't want no man that's not going to be committed. Uh, Yeah. No. Me neither. It does say here, although this isn't really a character trait, women love men who aren't afraid to commit. Well, of course, I'm thinking... Women want a man, I got to read this whole thing. Women want a man who not only goes after what he wants, but also protects and stays loyal and committed once he has it. Here's the word, afraid. When you said, okay, when you say afraid, if men are afraid to commit, why is that? Well, maybe they're afraid that they're not going to like it once they get in the relationship and they're going to want to bail. Or maybe they're afraid that you're going to bail. None of that bodes well for a healthy, committed, loyal, attractive situation. Mm, Right. No. You want to be able to stand on your own two feet and you want to be able to get into a a situation where this is going to work. Yeah. You don't want to wonder, is it going to work? Is it going to work? No flakiness. No wishy-washy. We don't want that. That's the perfect term. No wishy-washy. Okay. That's it. That okay. was the end well, of that one. Well, that I got was interesting. one more. Yeah. You got one more what? One more list okay. of seven things that women will always... This is for all ages. Not that the other one wasn't really. But I like this one because... It's just seven. All right. Let's hear it. And I can go along with these. Seven things that women will always be attracted to. Drive. They'll always be attracted to that masculine energy and drive that some men have. Presence. They want their man to be present. I guess that could also go along with attentiveness. Like it does. Like you want them to pay attention. Big thing is the phone and the TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got to meet these emotional needs, guys. Come on. Right. So make eye contact with your woman and Mm -hmm. listen to her when she's talking. Reflect back what she's saying. Yes. Have an appropriate response. Right. (laughs) Not something that was out of left field. You just trying to (laughs) pretend like you're paying attention. Oh, my God. Which we do that, too, sometimes. A lot of times. We're not perfect. Yeah, those are the meatball. I mean, the (laughs) protein balls. (laughs) Yeah. Don't okay. Do that. Yeah. Uh, humor. 
spontaneity. Wait, go back to humor. Mm -hmm. Speaking of humor, Mm. let's reference episode number 68 because we did a podcast Mm -hmm. episode. It is episode 68 and it's called Is Being Funny Attractive? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that question is yes. Yes. (laughs) Go back and listen to that if you haven't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it says here that this guy who did who made this list, he once polled a few hundred women and asked them, what is the most important non-physical trait that attracts you to a guy? And the top answer was a sense of humor. Yeah, that's a great, it's a great asset because everybody likes to laugh. Yeah, and now I, I, I think anyway, more than ever, what we've been through this past few years has just been really dark and really heavy so definitely a sense of humor would be a good it's helpful attribute yeah okay back to uh spontaneity i guess uh predictability is like death to attraction (laughs) here's what i I love about spontaneity if if a man you know comes home with flowers and you're not expecting it Mm -hmm. that's so great right yeah it's not your birthday it's not your anniversary he's just thinking of you and he's thinking of you so much that he stopped off and he bought flowers. That's spontaneous. And it's so appreciated. For sure. Yeah. So ladies, if you're listening and that would be something that you would like, plant that seed in your man and just say, you know, don't do it today because then it won't be spontaneous. <laughs> right. <laughs> but just tuck this aside <laughs> and down the road once we've forgotten about this conversation. Yeah. And sometimes it has to be more than a hint. You have to just like bold out, tell them. Yeah. This is something I like. I know that you have no idea because you're a man. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you. (laughs) Yeah. Or if your husband would spontaneously plan a date night Mm. from beginning to Mm. end, right? When you've got little kids, he arranges the babysitter. He picks the restaurant. He picks the time. He tells you. (laughs) We're, we're, we would we're, be very good men, Catherine. <laughs> we're outlining the perfect man. And he's not the six million dollar man. He's just the man that has these attributes. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story. My husband did this once. And now we've been married 33 years. So he did it once. <laughs> once that I remember. And raising five boys was, was no small feat. Mm-hmm. It was a very big deal. Well, we had decided. Many small feet. Huh? It was many small feet. Oh, and the <laughs> smell of those feet. And then feet. big feet. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have a pile of tennis shoes. Remember by our front door? When yes, you would, I do. When you would walk into our house when we had all the kids at mm-hmm. home, there would be a pile of boys, teenagers, shoes. whatever, shoes. Backpacks. Everything. Coats. Everything. Mm-hmm. A big mount. Anyway, those days are done. I'm starting to get like <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> I want to tell you about this yeah, spontaneous tell me thing. Yeah, story. Well, we we were trying to figure out a date night, mm-hmm. you know, and we were trying to be um, faithful to it, but we wanted to surprise one another. So Ron, it was Ron's turn to plan. Well, he planned a, a horseback riding. Oh. Yeah. He planned it out. Oh, wow. And uh, we went horseback riding. It was one of those things where the horses were basically, you know. Very old, tame. They're old and ready yeah. to go night night. Was and, it in Payless? I, I, don't, I don't remember now. It's been so many years. It oh. might have been. Mm-hmm. And they just go on a trail. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Because you couldn't imagine me on a horse horse. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Taken <laughs> off. Uh, I remember we took pictures and those, we took Polaroid pictures. We oh. had a Polaroid camera where the picture comes right out. Well, any young person that's listening is not going to know that they were once ancient because that's a big thing now, Polaroid Is again. it really? Oh, yeah. There's a Polaroid app. I almost downloaded it. Mm-hmm. And you get the actual Polaroid look where you get that big white thing at the bottom and it's real square. Really? Yes. But, and I, yeah. But now is Polaroid camera coming back where you get the physical picture? Uh, or yes. is it just a pretend thing on the app? Well, like you, can, you can get... Uh, the app, which is, to, I don't know exactly how it works on wow. the app, but you get that Polaroid look, but also the Polaroid cameras are making a comeback. There's Polaroid t-shirts, the I 80s had look no with the... idea. Yeah. Well, we had yeah. the actual yeah. Polaroid camera. <laughs> Back where, in the day. Right. Where you had to wait for it to develop and you kind of wave it. Yep. I don't know if that yep. does anything to yep. it, but you're yeah. waving it. And then you watch the image appear. Appear. It's so know. cool. Yeah. We have that picture somewhere. I think it's in my attic. Oh, 
but that was such a neat thing because I had no idea where we were going. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm glad I didn't wear a dress and heels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He probably would have told me. Yeah. Um, but that's what I mean by spont- spontaneity. Do something where you plan it. Yeah. Women, if you're listening, tell your men, just plan a date night for me. Just yeah. tell me where to be at what time, you know, mm-hmm. maybe what to wear. But you plan it from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. And men, if you're listening, we don't have that many men listening. But if they are, <laughs> plan it. Do yeah. something. Something fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then the number next. Five. Number five. Someone who is intentional about life. Someone Goals. Who, go, yeah. Goals. <laughs> Goals are good. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think somebody that, you know, life is important. Right. And therefore, let's be prepared for these ups and downs. You know, that kind of thing. You know, another thing I think just to throw in there is family. If family is important, like I noticed that about your husband, his mom is very important to him. Mm-hmm. And I think that translates, you know, I think yeah. I think that that just and and for my husband, too. I mean, on my mm-hmm. side. But I think that for men to really show to involvement that they're involved, they care, they call, they they do Mother's Day, birth, yeah. you know what I mean? The yeah. solve carry stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually not on here. And it just came to me, a man who's involved. That, that should be on here. I just added it to my list for Well, that's for good. Yeah. I guess a lot of women always will be attracted to a man with leadership ability. Now. I'm just, this is not on here, I don't think, but I'm going to say this. That is why so many women fall under the spell of many, like, cult type leader guys. And even, even, they like that bad pastors and things like that. Yeah. Because women are attracted to, you know, their leadership ability. Well, when I think about cults and I think about the mind control and all that, and it's usually a charismatic person. Mm Mm-hmm. It's somebody who is goal oriented. They have a mission. They communicate the mission. Yeah. And they get you on board. Yeah. Okay, so not with the cult. Not not that kind. Not <laughs> a with domineering the, right. boss either. Not that kind either. But in a great way, it's sort of like women, I feel like what I want and I have, thank God, with my husband. Mm-hmm. I want a man who's gonna commit to me fully, mm-hmm. wholly, first of all, and be committed to my children our children, you know, and just kind of show the way like here, this is the life that we can map out together. Yeah, right. A commitment to the Lord. And 100%. Yeah, right. Yeah. And we want to I want to point out that this also says that there's a huge difference in someone who's a power hungry. Actually, it says jackass, (laughs) as opposed (laughs) to a person who is loving and patient and inspiring. So when we're talking about leadership quality, we're talking about a well rounded kind of guy though. right last but not least i don't think vulnerability hmm yeah don't be afraid don't. to be yourself be authentic and show the it's, softer side yeah love it yeah, yeah yeah all right well thank you for sharing that i'm glad that i was able to narrow it down to two websites because yeah. when i was doing this research i was oh my gosh it, there were so many that popped up yeah. and as you know at first i wasn't sure if we were going to do what women are attracted to in life like what do they what do they like to do what are you know things like that so then I was all over the place I'm like oh my gosh yeah so finally well in the article that I came across was pretty straightforward it's in men's health and it's called 19 ways to be more attractive according to science okay okay so this is written for men make her laugh that's number one. Oh. Mm-hmm. okay here's number two Wear sunglasses. Who doesn't love a a man in sunglasses? Hmm. Yeah, and they say this is according to science. Sunglasses make guys hotter, and there's proof to back it up. Vanessa Brown, a lecturer at Nottingham Trent University, explained that sunglasses make a man look mysterious. So this is a quote from this person. The eyes are such a tremendous source of information and vulnerability for the human being. She told The Cut, which is the name of the place that was interviewing her Mm -hmm. not having that information makes women drawn to you they want to learn more about the man behind the glasses okay i could buy into it that that's an attraction 
But I would say that that's not what keeps her, though. Well, if you wore the sunglasses 24-7, yeah. that would be weird, Catherine. I actually just, Big red flag. I actually just <laughs> said to Kenny the other day, I said, why do you have those on still? It's dark. <laughs> Take them off. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Number three, be nice. Duh. Mm. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Number four, I 100% disagree with. Okay. It says wear cologne. Oh, I do agree with that. I do like cologne yeah. and I am attracted to it. Hey, go back to what was the number one? Oh, the number humor. one was the make, humor. Her, make her laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, again, refer to episode number 68. Just go back and mm-hmm. listen to that because we have all the stats yeah. on why being funny is attractive. The cologne thing is uh, dependent upon the individual. Catherine loves it. I hate it. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand it. And so my husband does not wear it because I won't get in the car with him. (laughs) All right. Here's number five. This one was interesting to me. Eat more garlic. Yeah. Says that a 2016 study published in the academic journal Appetite found that men who eat garlic smell more pleasant and attractive than those who don't. Okay. As usual, (laughs) I do not believe the science all the time (laughs) because... Well, garlic is supposed to be really good for you, well, really yeah, healthy. I absolutely know that, but I don't see how it's. I'm just an saying attractive... it's in their men's health. They don't lie. Mm-hmm. Number six, travel with an entourage. Okay. So you know, if you got a group of guys, you know. Okay, here's number seven. Befriend a baby, and with oh. a baby are oh. more attractive. Mm-hmm. And did you know mm-hmm. that, like on those apps, you know how everybody does the dating now on apps. Uh, yeah. The men on the apps who have a kitten or a puppy. Oh, I'm sure. They get more swipes to the whatever way it's supposed to go. I'm surprised it says baby and not like a puppy or a dog or something. Okay. Let me read this. Um, okay. Where's the baby one? They skipped it. Befriend a baby and then they go to, wait, here, let me click, learn more. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Darn it. That was an ad. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I I would be I don't know. Okay. It's hard to say. Okay, here. Okay, I'm sorry I found it. Though traveling with an entourage is never a bad move, your best wingman may actually be a baby. Hmm. According to research from France, men who played nice with babies were more than 3 times as likely to score a woman's phone number than guys who ignored the newborns. In fact, 40% of ladies gave up their digits after they saw saw men smiling, cooing, and talking with the tykes. So if you have a niece or nephew you're crazy about, volunteer to babysit. Okay, I think for our audience, it would be a grandpa. Like, okay, same. Like, I'm know? saying the same yeah. thing. Okay, and think about it. Deep inside of, of, of women, uh-huh. right? We're nurturing. We're, we're mothers. Mm-hmm. And... So we want to see that that yeah yeah anyway it's a baby uh number eight walk your dog dogs you know they're like a little magnet Mm -hmm. number nine give your razor a break have a little oh a little rough Mm -hmm. rough and you know whatever uh number 10 master your gait oh i could yeah so if you got a gimp (laughs) or a limp work on it walk with confidence men (laughs) Don't drag your feet. Don't shuffle. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no shuffling. All right. Number 11, craft your dating app profile wisely. Because, you know, it's all with the apps now. Yeah. And, and you had mentioned before we dis, uh, started broadcasting here that a lot of women our age, so we're both in our 50s, mm-hmm are finding themselves single again. Either, yeah. you know, husband died yeah. or they got divorced. And, you know, if you're if if you're single and you're in your middle 50s, I mean, the way we dated, it was, everything was in person. There was no internet. There were dating ads in the paper. Oh, yeah, I remember mm-hmm. those. Not that I ever <laughs> <laughs> pursued that. And it's okay if you did, listeners, but I just didn't. <laughs> None for me. <laughs> princess Catherine. all right number 12 steer clear of selfies Hmm. i guess selfies are a turn off so have somebody else take your picture Hmm. number 13 smile but slowly like don't be too eager to smile but do it like "Mm." Like, i'm cool (laughs) yeah you gotta be cool yeah don't be a geek 
Okay, number 14, <laughs> stay strong, but not too strong. And I read into this a little bit further. Women don't like men who look like they're too weak, but they don't like them to be all chiselly chisel and mm-hmm. and too structured either. Yeah, they want something then they're in into themselves. They're probably a narcissist, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, well, they, maybe it's just to too that. hard maybe or too harsh, you know, like. I would say eh, he's into himself. Okay. Number 15, flaunt your battle scars. Oh. Like, you know, so if you've got a scar on your face or something, don't be afraid of it. Don't be, just be confident. Mm -hmm. Women don't really care if you have a scar. Okay. Um, Ron has a scar on his thigh. Mm -hmm. He fell. He was running as a kid and he fell and he, and his stake went into his leg. Yeah. It was a big deal. He was bleeding profusely all over the place. And uh, I remember the first time that I saw the scar, mm-hmm. I was like, what's that? And he told me some big wives tale, like, you know, he was a shark bite, <laughs> something like that. And I'm like, really? Kenny has many scars. He has one where, in, on his thigh too, mm-hmm. and he stitched himself oh, up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He, he, and, a, by the way, he's not, man. <laughs> he has no medical background. <laughs> But he sterilized the needle and <laughs> got some, himself. he stitched himself up. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Maybe missing some brain I told cells. You, he does everything himself. Yeah. When our, our tree blow, blew over in our yard yesterday. Yeah. And it was half our tree. And so he said, I'm going to go home and I'm going to, you know, take care of it. it down. I said, don't, 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 don't. Let's first, let's find out from the village if there's, you know, if there's any help or let's just wait a minute, you know. He's like, I can do it myself. <laughs> I'm like, God. <laughs> oh by the way we we forgot to mention our sponsors who happen to oh, be our husbands so right. let's not throw them totally <laughs> under the bus <laughs> yeah. all right i'm almost done here number 17 ditch the corny pickup line mm-hmm. so don't don't try to be corny with your pickup lines mm-hmm. guys okay and then number 18 it says man spreading can be a good thing man what man spreading where they spread out their legs when they sit oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is all scientifically proven. They okay. okay. It says women rated men who sat with an open body posture, legs spread, arms stretched out, and used hand gestures as hotter than guys who sat with their legs together and arms folded. This was from the UK. Mm-hmm. Open body language is considered to be a sign of dominance. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then number nineteen is buy a bouquet. Just oh. a simple bouquet of flowers. Yeah, and that's it. With the spreading and hand the flowers. Yeah, man spread <laughs> and hand the flowers. Okay. And be nice. That was very interesting. It was fun. Yeah. All right, so what's your perspective on all of this? What If you had to sum it up, <sighs> mm-hmm. like in a sentence or two, what would you say? I would say that a man who is responsible... And funny, right perspective on when to be funny. I would definitely say, yes, physical appearance does matter. Mm -hmm. Integrity, that's a very good attribute. Yeah, make sure they pay their taxes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, what the IRS agents. If if Kenny said to me one day, you know, if he just turned and he said, hey, what do you think about, yeah, like not paying the taxes or not paying this. So, you know, other people don't. I would be like, "Hmm, what happened to you? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Christian. That definitely is huge. Content, but yet driven at the same time. So c- when I say content, I mean like, you know, not where always uh, unsettled. Mm-hmm. Okay. And involved. Yeah. So the, well, which I, a lot of those things we did cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say if I had to sum it up in a sentence, I would say trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with mm-hmm. that decision. It's a very big decision mm-hmm. on, uh, you know, dating slash getting married. You yeah. Know, and you are committing your whole self and giving 100% of your whole self to that person. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they're going to give 100% of themselves to you. And yeah. then the two together would make 200%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so hopefully you could go forward when you face the challenges in life, because that's where things fall apart. Yeah. When everything is puppy dogs and rainbows, it's all great. But when you're really challenged in life, you have to have that commitment and that integrity and all the things that we just mentioned. Yeah. It, it, so I would just suggest give it to the Lord. Mm. You know, douse sure. it in a lot of prayer 
and have a time too. Don't make any quick rash, rash decisions. decisions. Yeah, because it's a biggie. For sure. Well, that was fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have some scripture to share. I do. As we always do. Mm-hmm. Psalm 37, verse 4. We have two of them today. Psalm 37, 4 says, let me click on it. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I basically just said that in a mm-hmm. nutshell. Right. And then we have 1 John two seventeen, And it says, the world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. Mm -hmm. And I think with that verse, we're talking more about keeping a perspective of heaven. You know, this earth is broken. It's a mess. Relationships are, I would call them. Yeah, I would call them fragile. I would call them challenging. Mm -hmm. But I would also call them wonderful. But you have to have the right perspective that, you know, this world is is one part of our existence. The next world is going to be even better. Yeah. Part two. Part two. That's right. All right. Uh, call to action. Oh, you want me to say? Yeah. Find a godly perspective. Yeah. And, and I think also don't be afraid to communicate. So, so look for these attributes that mm-hmm. we just went over. Mm-hmm. Look for those attributes in your man. And if you're... If you're not seeing something that you'd like to see, don't be afraid to communicate that in a godly way, in a nice way, in a kind way. Do your man that you would love it if blah, blah, blah. Maybe you would love it if he would be more spontaneous. Like, I would love it if when you go to the ice cream store, just bring me a scoop. (laughs) Right? That would be great. All right. Uh, Next episode is how to stop complaining. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. So if things don't work out on this episode, <laughs> we're going to teach you how to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm still comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm still Catherine. And see you next time. Bye.